Hello and welcome from Germany. Welcome to the first ever presentation from the Schöps Video Studio, which we launched today. And actually, we are here in the catacombs of the Schöps company building, which was built in the 17th century. So I'm very excited that we are doing this today. Thank you very much, Sound Devices, for the invitation to this wonderful event. And my topic today is a very exciting one because I will be speaking about one of the core topics of our company, which is uh, miniaturization and modularity. And uh, the whole history of Schöps was about this. And um, we are also launching a new product that uh, perfectly fits into that history line today. So let's start at uh, our very first microphone, which was built in 1950. It's the CMV 52. And actually it was a um, microphone that was primarily meant to demonstrate the capsule, the Schoeps CM56 capsule, which at that time had an audibly better high frequency response than any other available studio microphone. In the next year then, in 1951, the CM51-3 hit the market. And this remarkable product uh, was miniaturized because of its smaller output transformer and of course uh, because of a new smaller tube that was used here. This beautiful design of that microphone um, led us uh, to revive uh, this microphone uh, in a modern form uh, a couple of years ago and we presented the V4 studio microphone and uh, this is a very uh, nice product uh, which was, was launched a couple of years ago. Then in 1952 the M201 was presented and uh, once again it was miniaturized a lot compared to its uh, predecessor. Here the diameter is uh, about 23 millimeters. And uh, the trick of the miniaturized 201 is that um, the output transformer and some other elements were placed outside the microphone housing in a pot in the microphone cable. And so the visible part of the microphone uh, was uh, becoming very small. You see that capsule head with the two capsule here. Already here we had an interchangeable capsule because there were a couple of different capsules available for that microphone. Then in 1954 the well-known M221 was presented. Here we already have the diameter of 20 millimeters, which then or already uh, also is occurring nowadays with the Colette series. And um, this step uh, has been possible because the tube again was smaller and uh, for the first time Schoeps here built its own miniaturized output transformers in order to fit that small housing. An important um, parameter of miniaturization is modularity because the trick that you place microphone and amplifier separately from each other makes essentially the visible part of the microphone very small. And that uh, was done for the first time with this series. It's the CMMT series that was sold exclusively in France in 1966 and the following years. Uh, you see in the picture that you have an uh, active extension cable that you can put in between the capsule and the amplifier. And as this series was exclusively sold in France in that time, uh, we um, know nowadays that a couple of years after the introduction of the series, it got a nickname. It was a French name and it then was also called Colette. And that was only a few years before 
the official launch of nowadays Colette system in 1973. Now not only active extension cables existed for this system, but also uh, tubes, active tubes, goosenecks and other elements. So that was the birth of a system which still is uh, sold today, which is modernized and expanded today and forms the core of our products nowadays. And actually today we are launching another component of the Colette system. But more about that in a minute. In 1994 then an important step was done by miniaturizing the electronics a lot. Now they could be uh, placed in the microphone housing with the birth of the CCM series in 1994. The system now is not modular anymore and uh, it also still exists nowadays as the smallest uh, microphone available. Then in 2016 these miniaturized electronics were also brought to our shotgun series of microphones. You know the famous Seam IT5 of course and the mini Seam IT is the, using the same capsule but now with the miniaturized electronics. One further step of miniaturization was taken uh, only recently with the newly introduced CMC1 U. Um, our primary product line, the Colette series, became available in a miniaturized form. And uh, today we will show that we can even get smaller because we are launching the CMC1 L which uses the same electronics, the CMC1 miniaturized electronics, but now we get smaller by using the small limo connector and we get a microphone that is only one inch and one ounce. So we are now able to build a modular microphone of the Colette series which is as small as a CCM compact microphone. But more about that later. Let me show again uh, the microphones in uh, a size comparison. Uh, here is the microphone from 1950, the CM-V52. Here we have the CM-513, the M201, the M221, the Colette series, the CCM series, the CMC1, also Colette series, but miniaturized, and today's product, the CMC1L, here equipped with an MK41. So why do we miniaturize at all at Chips? Essentially, there are two major arguments for that. It's the easier handling of smaller microphones, of course. And, and as you see that here in that picture, in particular, in particular at the end of a boom, it matters a lot whether or not the microphone is lightweight and small. And of course, also the improved visual compatibility of the microphone is a major point here. Uh, anyway, that's a core topic of our company because we wouldn't be a standard in all these concert halls if we wouldn't have made this development to make small and elegant microphones which can be nicely concealed within a concert hall environment or on a film set. And um, also uh, when you're thinking of hanging microphones, uh, we are uh, building microphones for uh, parliaments, for example, where uh, large quantities of small microphones uh, are hanging from the ceiling and uh, served there to record the members of the parliament. 
why can we miniaturize? Of course, um, miniaturization was possible because of a major technological progress, which was done in the last decades. First of all, of course, smaller electronic components. As you see it here in a picture, this small component SMD uh, technique um, replaces an element that was uh, much larger before, of course. Uh, then, of course, uh, miniaturization can not be done without an automated assembly of circuitry boards. Um, the discrete hand assembly of circuitry boards is not possible anymore with that size of elements. And um, also the circuit board technologies like rigid flex or multi-layer techniques got much more common within the last decades and much cheaper as well. So we can make use of them now also for our microphones. Um, and also, as you see it uh, in that picture, that actually is an IC, so an integrated circuitry. And uh, these got much better in the recent years. And they replace large parts of former circuitry boards. So, of course, uh, by using them, it's possible to get uh, smaller microphones. Last not least, it's our know-how, which gained a lot in the last decades and um, it's uh, really decisive uh, how to um, make the circuitry boards and how to um, optimize the layout here because in the microphone you have various different uh, elements and sometimes they disturb each other so you really have to care about how and where to place them. So here's a lineup of the microphone electronics of four generations of uh, Schoeps microphones. Um, you see on the right side, um, the um, uh, once again, the CMV50 from uh, the 50s. So all these discrete elements with the tubes and the output transformer. And uh, you can see the CMC5. So um, this was built um, in 1973 when the Colette system was launched. Also discrete elements, hand assembled, of course. Then the next generation was launched in 1991 with the CMC6. Uh, in the meantime, of course, also SMD mounted uh, devices, um, automatic assembly, but the same form factor still. But then in uh, 2019, the CMC1U with the rigid flex technology and again a major step of miniaturization. The CMC1 um, not only is smaller than its predecessor, but we were also able to improve some um, uh, parameters of the um, amplifier. And uh, that was made possible by all these uh, technological steps that I just mentioned. We achieved a very low current consumption of uh, 2 milliamps. We achieved a high maximum sound pressure level of uh, 135 uh, dB SPL. And what is very important, uh, we are using uh, the Schoeps RFI shield um, because we see um, that these miniaturized microphones are used a lot in combination with uh, wireless transmitter or even nowadays digital wireless transmitters, uh, which output high energy of RF. Uh, and of course, this dis could disturb the microphone a lot. And uh, the CMC1U and also the CMC1L uh, was tested uh, with a couple of transmitters uh, successfully tested. Um, as, for example, the Audio Limited A10. And also parameters like the 
a low output impedance and the common mode reject uh, rejection ratio were improved in the CMC1. Uh, again, here's a lineup of our Colette amplifiers. Uh, from left to right, it's the CMC6, the CMC1, uh, the CMC1U uh, with the XLR output and L with the LEMO output. For comparison reasons, there's the CCM41 here and it's Colette brother, the CMC1L, equipped with an MK41. On the right side of this slide, you can see that uh, the CMC1 will also be available in a version with a permanently attached cable, uh, which we call CMC1K. The CMC1 uh, really is a milestone in the history of Shep's and we are quite uh, proud of that. Um, the CMC1U was presented already in uh, 2019, in October of last year, and has already become one of our most successful products now. So by the um, application of the CMC1L now, we further can reduce the size. And uh, what is very important in the case of the CMC1L is that from day one, it is one of our most flexi fle flexible and versatile microphones because it not only is compatible with all accessories of the CCM series, but also with all components of the Colette series. So it is one of the most flexible products that we ever made. And in this picture, you already see some possible applications. Um, the use together with a digital wireless transmitter like the AT10, uh, as we mentioned before, um, due to the fact that it is compatible with the CCM series, of course, we can use it with, a, with an existing suspension like the Minix or with a new suspension that Sinila just presented, like the O6, which is dedicated for the CMC1L uh, in combination with a CAT60. And also in the concert hall, of course, the CMC1L will be found. Uh, in this example, we are using an RC tube and an MK4 to show it to you. Well, um, the CMC1L is available as of now uh, at a price of 729 euro or 919 dollars. Uh, it comes with a 5 meter cable adaptation from LEMO 2 XLR output and a miniature stand adapter that holds the microphone by the 8 millimeter LEMO connector safely. Thank you for your attention and have a lot of fun with all the other presentations now. Thanks.